Welcome back, everybody. It's the best fitness show you'll find anywhere in the world. I'm very confident. I know some people say cocky, whatever. Check this out. We got another giveaway for you. That's what we do all the time. You know how we're giving? We're going to keep doing that. So here's the deal. Here's what you get today. Free access to MAPS Performance and MAPS Suspension. Both those programs are on sale this month, but we're going to give one of you lucky viewers free access to both programs. Here's how you win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to those two awesome programs. Then you can look hot and sexy just like Justin because that's what he does. He looks hot and sexy. Uh, also, I did say those programs are on sale. If you want to buy those programs, if you're not the lucky viewer and you're like, look, let me just get them because I know they're on sale. They're both 50% off. That's huge. That means they cost almost nothing and you get lifetime access for them. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code SEPTEMBER50, SEPTEMBER50. By the way, you also have to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications to win anything. So do those things. All right, enjoy the show. We've been working out for a long time. We've been training people forever. When's the last time you did an exercise you've never really done before? And, like, that, and, you, and you came out of it. Give and you me were like, an example, because I'm pretty sure I've done everything. I'm pretty sure he can't give you an example of something you haven't done. I bet I can. <laughs> okay, well, I got one. I, got I don't one. know. He's Sal. He no, has ideas. The one that you've done that you haven't done in a long time. Oh, Only no. Justin can answer that. Yeah. Well, no, what I mean is, <laughs> like, how that's pretty rare at this point, right? It's pretty rare. Yeah, to you find do. an exercise that you never, the last that time you never I, did, and then you do it, and you're like, right, oh my God, so the I love last this. exercise that I can re mm. that I can recall, and we actually, I don't know if I mentioned that this was in that category. Calf raise. No, I'll see you. Got me there. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I have done everything for the Cavs <laughs> possible. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just kidding, bro. Uh, no, uh, we we brought this up on the show the other day about um, I don't remember what the question was, but we talked about uh, hang cleans. Oh, hang cleans Jeez. to a press uh, was something that I recently introduced into my routine when I was competing. But that was years ago. Yeah, but that was a, I hadn't done that before that really. And that and then became a staple. It was actually, I was working out with Justin. He got me to do them. I saw the benefits from it, felt the benefits from it right away. And then it became like a staple. So Okay, so mm. today, uh, so you guys know who Vince Garanda was? So I've heard you say his name a bunch. So old school bodybuilder, probably, I want to say one of the first kind of science-based bodybuilders. And a lot of the stuff he did and said still stands true today. Some of the stuff, not so much, but some of it was pretty remarkable. So if you ever want to go back and read and research old bodybuilders and lifters, he's very interesting, right? So anyway, um, before I came to work this morning, I was reading an article about Vince Garanda, and he used to promote a specific chest exercise I've heard of before, never done, okay? And today I tried it. It's called the guillotine press. Have you guys ever done this? No, never okay. heard of it. Okay, so it's like a bench press, except you bring the bar to your collarbone or your neck. So when you're benching, your uh -huh. elbows are way out here, and you're bringing the bar way up here. Like and then here's the second. your head. Here's the second part of it that's interesting. You 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 take your feet off the bench. Something we and so here's what's weird about Which, this. Disclaimer on all this right now. Yes. For our audience <laughs> listening, please, please God, God that please. Popular. No, this. <laughs> don't I was just don't gonna, do this. At I home. was just going to say this is yeah. an exercise that you have to have good shoulder mobility and good stability to do. And like we've said before, no exercises are dangerous. Your lack of mobility or your lack of ability okay, to do so them. Okay, right? so give me why is he promoting his legs up off the bench? Okay, so, and this is the interesting part, right? So first off, bringing the barbell way up high where you're kind of almost at the neck activates the upper chest on a flat bench tremendously. In fact, I after I read about this exercise, I was doing more reading, there was a study that was actually done, and I believe Brett Contreras was part of this study, where they looked at muscle activation and the guillotine press actually outperformed incline, it outperformed every other chest exercise. Interesting. For, because of the way it lines up the muscle fibers. Yeah, and, and you and do this on a flat bench. A flat. So you elbows have to be real high. You have to really pack very, the shoulders. Very bodybuilder-esque type of a press. So yes. We used to, I don't I didn't know the name of it, but we used to to play around with that when really trying. bringing the elbows out. Yeah, yeah. Right. I didn't so, I didn't elevate the legs though. Right. So now here's why you do the legs. If your chest is high with that arch, it that once that position makes you naturally want to bring your elbows down. If you have this real high arch and you bring your elbows up, it almost puts too much stress on the shoulder. So when you bring your legs back with the elbows up high, it's okay that you flatten out a little bit. 
it still directly activates the chest. I know it sounds weird. Interesting. But I did it this morning, and just to give people some reference, because you got to go light on this, and again, you have to have good stability, good mobility. I mean, if this feels weird, don't do it. Because, yeah, we're not recommending it to yeah. about 95% of you. Because no. it, it, it's, it's one of those exercises that puts a lot of things and makes it vulnerable, right? Yeah. So I did it, and normally if I work out with the flat bench, I'm going to go, I'll maybe go up to like 225, right? Yeah. I only went up to 185, so that's how much lighter I was. And I put my feet up on the bench, and I flared my elbows out, brought it down my neck. Oh my gosh, dude! This exercise felt well, incredible. I could see though how if your form is off a little bit, though, this is not going to be good. I thought of one just because you guys had both mentioned one, and, and one Adam actually nobody cares me. anymore now. It, listen, <laughs> I'm circling back I'm because kidding, you guys bro. just completely I'm just avoided kidding, me. Bro, I really care. Let me hear. Let me hear. <laughs> <laughs> I finally came up with an example. Okay, He's also, it's it, a took, curl. it took me that long. Yeah, yeah. So. You're laying down on your back and with the cable machine, and you're doing like um, lateral raises. Oh, but but crossing like oh, good call back and like come up. Great pump for your delts. Yeah, that one. That was, Adam uh, actually showed Doug that. Like, yeah, uh, that was uh, you know who ago. introduced that to me, uh, Ben Pokolsky. Yeah, Ben Pokolsky introduced it to me when he he came up. I think one of the first times he came here, and him and I got a workout at the the, the Gold's Gym or <clears throat> back when it was Gold's. And uh, he got me to do that. Never seen anyone do that before. Locks you into position. Oh, I, I there's no movement. Love it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If I do, uh, if I, if I'm obviously in our studio for sure, hundred percent. Little, it's tougher in a more popular yeah. gym. Yeah, lay on the floor. Gonna, like, step yeah, on you. Exactly. And there's a lot of people yeah. and stuff like that. You don't know what's on the but floor. But absolutely, in here, if I if I'm going to do a cable lateral raise, that's the only way I do it now. Mm -hmm. I just I feel like it locks you into position so well, and you can't cheat it when you're. Well, dude, I, cheat I'm telling you, yeah. I was tripping off this guillotine press because what I've been trying to do, I think yeah, it's you have the, to show me that later. I think it's the you know now we've been doing this podcast for years, and so it must be the years of uh, just bullying you guys are doing with me over my chest development. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's the YouTube hey, bro, comments. Hey, it's, it's not, not us. It's the internet, yeah. bro. Exactly. Yeah. Hey. Anyway, we, guys, we got your back. We're like, no, nah, finally got to me. Sal's a beast, dude. He's got this huge, you know, just barrel. We chest. don't need to lie. Yeah, yeah. we don't need to I'm lie about it. it. But anyway, no, I was just, just think, you know, I'm, I've been changing my form and going lighter and trying to connect. I think it's working. But dude, I swear to God, this guillotine press is interesting. I'm gonna start doing it. On, I felt more activation doing that than I have doing uh, incline uh, barbell presses. Hmm. But again, disclaimer. It puts your your shoulders in a position that are precarious. So if you don't have, and I got decent for some things, shoulder mobility. I can compress really easily behind my neck. I could do pull ups behind my neck. So and it doesn't bother me. A lot of people though won't be able to do. You this don't think without. it's just because you never trained chest and now you're just doing something? <laughs> yeah, <fun>. right. <laughs> hey, I just got the wife beater muscle the calf comment. That's, I put the wife beater on. I'm like everything that's showing. I'll work out. <laughs> everything yeah. that's covered. Why? Yeah. Why? why do would, it? I'm gonna walk out about irrelevant. Anyway, to make myself feel better, I'm gonna bring something up that I said I wasn't gonna do, but now you guys are just making fun of me. So I have to. <laughs> okay, let's hear. It. So and we got to give context to the people watching the show right now. Okay, so here's the deal. Adam and Justin grew up athletes, right? Very coordinated. Oh, here we go. Hold on. He does have Hold to make himself. Go. Let me finish. Go uh, on. Come on. You know, Let okay. me finish. Carnival Sal. No. Carnival Sal. You got already started. <laughs> already making shit up. Listen. <laughs> Listen. They're great. They've been played sports. Justin, college, football. Adam, you know. Video every, games. Every sport that existed. <laughs> you know, all, all I did was work out. I just lifted weights. I did I did judo, jiu-jitsu, not a big deal. I had a purple belt. Just want to mention that real quick. <laughs> just want to throw the purple belt out there again. Yeah, I just got to yeah. do that. No, um, no, but here's the deal. There's only, there's two times <laughs> in our lives that we all competed at something that was semi Sportish. I don't you, want to say it was a sport. It definitely yeah. sportish. Like yeah. let's let's caveat. And that. here's the best part: both caught on film. So the first time we played horse and I beat them, and they yeah. are still angry about that. Right. That we, one actually made me more angry. Yeah. We went to Top Golf, and I have a terrible swing. I've got bat, whatever. Never played golf. I suck. Even if I practice, I probably still suck. But. I won again. Yeah. This is really weird. He took a driver, okay, a driver with a head this big, harder to be accurate, and I've heard. just just pushed it just, just a little to the closest tap. hole. Pushed it just like he's putting, right? Pushed it, hey. and it went right into the very first hole, and he'd get like eight and ten points consistently. I got I mean, listen, so because I video I videoed his swing, so I must have got a hundred DMs about it. But I said, he fucking. I mean, won, he hacked man. the system, bro. <laughs> We're not taking anything away Obviously, from that. Obviously, he's doing something better We're than me. We're just saying, you figure out what the game really is about, yeah. you know, break it down in your mind, and then you're just like, this is hey. the 
least amount of effort I can uh, put out there hey, you know to what? get it done. This reminds me of, there was one time, dude, oh my God, Adam, I don't even know if you were there. I know you were there, but you went around us. Dude, I got Justin so angry one time. <laughs> he got so mad. We were at the- Oh, the boxing. Bro. Punching the bag. You don't know, I had to tell him because- I wasn't I was, right with I was like, he's not going to sleep tonight if I don't tell him what happened. Uh, we yeah, had to I hit that really bag to that. see how hard you can punch, and Justin just like, wow, you know? And I went over there, and I look at the physics of the thing. I'm like, oh, if I punch at a down angle, it's going to swing. So I was doing that, and I was fucking blowing out the numbers. I, he was so angry, he stopped talking. Yeah. And he couldn't, he's like, I'm not, I couldn't tell he's not going to sleep. I'm like, dude, this is what I did. Dude. And he's like, oh. So what Sal's not telling us is he's really like a traveling gypsy. I just, uh, <laughs> you I mean, nailed that just, with the, yeah. when you called it, you say, you know what it is? He's just good at carnival games. No, he no, was a dude. carny worker in another life. No, I mean, you dude. must have been like the best boyfriend ever growing up, right? <laughs> like, you're the one that's winning the big ass. Popping all the balloons. Like, oh, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I got you, baby girl. Oh, here's a ring. I got you. <laughs> like, like, you just, everything. Like, hey. you know, at the boardwalk, you're just, yeah. Hey, doing shoot, research like, be before this, we go to Top Golf. Oh, yeah. Baby. <laughs> I mean, you, what you guys don't know is they did a whole week of research to figure out how to beat you guys. No, I didn't even know. You did, dude. I, just, I, I don't doubt it. I hit all. it, and then it went in the first one, and I saw the points. I'm like, well, I'll just keep doing that yeah. over and over again. Well, isn't like Can't, your other favorite thing to do, like arm wrestling? Like you well, got yeah. that down to a science. Yeah, too. but that, that requires some strength, though. Yeah, so you gotta be, you gotta be strong. It for does, that. but it's also like majority of his technique. Oh, yeah, that was a good God. time though. And I had a lot of fun. Speaking of punching, right, and all and stuff, oh, I yeah. wa I watched the Jake Paul fight this week. He won. Okay, so a couple things. Um, one, uh, I actually enjoyed the card. It was a really good card. Wow. Yeah, really good card. They're taking it to new levels, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, now he signed with Showtime, so this is a obviously a big deal. So oh it was done God. perfect. Remember the, the last one? I was like, oh, what a joke. That yeah, I don't know. Right. I can't remember the name of like that. like a circus. Yeah, whatever. I don't remember the name of that organization that, that put it on it wasn't before. Wasn't like Snoop Dogg, one of the uh, announcers? Yeah, it, it, was, it was so hokey, and just the fights were whack, like... Not good at all. This, totally different. I mean, you had all your regular Showtime announcers that were doing it. Very professional. Uh, Barstool Sports was there first time talking about live betting while it was going on. So that was that was different. But the whole card was pretty good. And the actual fight between Woodley and Jake Paul was good. Now, it was good because it uh, because I know there's somebody who's really into boxing that's going to shame me for this, right? Like, that was not good boxing. Okay. It wasn't... Uh, two great boxers fighting. It was a good fight. Like, I mean, I want I wanted to see Woodley win, right? Even though I didn't think now, he would. He knocked him back in the fourth, I read. Yeah, so, I mean, I sent over the clips so you guys could watch it, but the, the first and second round, it looked exactly kind of how I thought it was going to be. It was like, Jake Paul came out, looked like a boxer, uh, was very technical. By the way, Jake Paul is light heavyweight, and he and Woodley is a welterweight. Yeah. So he's got twenty pounds on him. Yeah. So he's yeah. a big, big, big discrepancy. Yeah. There. And he's a actual boxer, even though he's not professional. He's a boxer versus a combat sport fighter. Yeah. And so Woodley came out in his like MMA stance. You know, you could yeah. like he looks like he's gonna shoot at any moment, which knowing he can't do that. So it did look like, oh man, this is he's just, he's not gonna be able mm -hmm. to withstand him. And I actually thought that Jake Paul's strategy was jab, jab, just get him to later rounds, and then he's gonna then he's gonna really pummel him. But uh, what ended up happening was as the later rounds went on, uh, Woodley actually started to gain confidence and started to get some shots in, and Jake Paul started to get tired. So, I mean, Jake Paul won the fight, but it was a, it was a split decision. He, so he won because he, he connected more technically. That's it, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Woodley dude. landed a couple of nice shots on him that rocked him a little bit. So did he, though. I mean, it was a good fight. It was a couple okay. times I got all loud and excited. Like, I, it was look, got I, me in. I know I've talked a lot of shit hmm. about this whole situation, but it's turning out that J I'm eating my words. It's looking like Jake Paul and his team are brilliant. Uh, promoters, they like, are, this is a and very their strategy smart, is very smart. Yeah, like the, the strategy that they're going into, it seems very clear to me that it's it's to go in to create uh, to get a lot of buys mm -hmm. and to figure out a situation where Jake has a very good chance. The of only buys that have beat this beat this fight out was Mayweather versus his brother. Wow. wow. Top pay-per-view buys. It's so insane. I mean, they're crushing is he, numbers. Is he becoming the highest-paid boxer now? 
So I don't know the stats. I know Mayweather and McGregor hold the, have the the record for like purses in, in a year yeah. or whatever. So I think they still hold that record right now. But I don't know. I know they're making a, a lot yeah. of money. And though. so technically, he's still an amateur boxer. He's not even a professional then, right? Yeah, he hasn't done any like. I, you know, I don't know how this works no, because they say sanctioned. pro. They say they're they're they calling him pro fights. Yeah, you, I don't think you can fight professionally as a boxer without head but he hasn't attack. fought a professional uh boxer he's fought like other MMA fighters guys and, yeah but they're and, all and youtube guys but they're all and, considered pro fights yeah so if, right okay I, i'm correct me if i'm wrong i'm not sure if I, this is correct but i think you can't fight professionally in most sanctioned fighting events uh, without headgear. In other words, if if it's not pro, they have oh, to be required to wear headgear. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I think it is professional. Yeah, I don't know. I do, you know, I don't know the rules, but I do know that they, they kept referring to it as a pro fight. So it's considered a pro fight because they said he's had one amateur fight and now three professional fights. I don't know what it like. Did. I'm just trying to wrap my brain. Is this like is he creating a new like a whole league? Like because like you don't you have to. I mean, title fights and all that. He's not like eligible for those. Right? No, I mean he's not going to go for. I mean, unless he keeps winning. He's no one. So he won't fight. Okay, one of the things that was very obvious to me after watching this fight because this is the first time he's been beyond two rounds, and the Ben Askren thing was a fucking joke. Ben yeah. Askren looked like he pounded twelve beers the day before, <laughs> showed up all soft. Yeah. Like he was never a boxer to be. Yeah, honest. he was. He's not even known for his, his hands he just at came all. To collect the check. Yeah, yeah, and he got put to sleep. That was an embarrassment. It was let. Okay, so he hasn't gone. So Jake Paul's gone beyond two pounds. The other one's uh, two rounds. The other one was a uh, what a, a internet guy or whatever, yeah. like in the you know basketball player or whatever. Like so, he hasn't really now. Woodley is the first like legit fighter. Also has. Hands, he's not a boxer, but he can throw a but punch. But he's a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah, he's a lot smaller. And he and so what this showed me more than anything else, one, it was I was impressed with Woodley's ability to get in there and stand and actually make this a fight and like give himself a chance. And it also highlighted because at the end of the fight, uh, Woodley wants another rematch. And they might, we'll see. But you could tell Jake Paul doesn't want a rematch with him because it, it could have easily went the other way for Woodley. Mm. And it showed that okay, if a real boxer yeah. somebody who is a considered a professional boxer who has legitimate and it could be a no name not even a good bot will whoop the shit out of jake yeah so if it, it's in his weight class and he's a legit boxer we'll fuck him well up. so here's the strategy no question let's predict the strategy because it, it's obvious to me that his you can goal, see what they're doing yeah he's going goals, up a ladder of, yes uh, yeah opponents right so now the next fight is going to be someone you're gonna be like oh maybe he'll kick his ass and then if he wins that it's oh. really like right. you know you could say all the things you want to about him being dumb and, and whatever like that like no dude as a promoter this is brilliant yeah what they've done it he's 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 picked these fights i mean they, the first one was a you know the the I'd england like guy who's like a youtube sensation yeah. so the views was i mean it was all no one they weren't real like and then he started working his way to fighters and it's interesting like you i i woodley will go down as like one of the greatest welterweights to ever fight he's he'll be in the hall of fame for do you know what would be a great Great fight is if one of Diaz brothers. No, no, he's not. He'll, you know what would be a really good fight is if he got a great old boxer to come out of retirement. So, like you imagine, like a, uh, yeah. a how old is Mike Tyson right now? Yeah, I don't know. How old For he example, is. Is <laughs> Mike would 60 kill him. Or, yeah. Well, but <laughs> yeah. see, that's the thing because he's so much older. You're right, though. I picked Mike. Yeah, Tyson, but they won't but, do that. So that's where he's been smart. He's picking yeah, fights he that. that he should yeah, Tyson win. Would kill him. He should win. I mean, like he was. I I would not have bet. Uh, I wanted Woodley to win. And I thought he has a, everyone's got a fighter's chance, yeah. right? And a, a, but Jake Paul is twenty pounds heavier. Is a is is training for boxing consistently. I, he should win. He's that obviously fight. a good athlete. Yeah. It's oh yeah. Like he's definitely like, an athlete. Didn't Roy Jones Jr. Mike Tyson fight not too long ago? Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. That was like a I didn't watch that one. Though. I don't know. I don't know what happened with that fight. But anyways, this was it was entertaining, man. I was I was actually that's smart, man. I was really impressed with it. Um, you know, that's a big job of uh, boxing managers and promoters is to figure out who you can fight that they think that will that you'll be able to beat and mm -hmm. will it generate a lot of excitement. And there's always you know, there's always those boxers that are such. They provide. They present so many problems to other boxers that they won't get fights just because of that. Yeah. Like, especially if like you're a southpaw or whatever. A lot of times, promoters are like, no, you're not going to fight my guy because you might beat him. It's or, and I don't know if you guys are seeing the you know the rippling effect from this. What I mean, you're it's happening like almost every weekend now. We just don't know about it. other promotions that aren't as big and bit less. Wow. That it's like all the Lamar Odom just fought that Supreme Patty guy who's a 2 million 4 million Instagram follower. I mean, there's people that are fighting 
now that are yeah. not, TikTok influencers fighting. That's other. what's going on. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a lot of that right now, and yeah. it's really interesting. <laughs> what so what the Showtime guys were saying? Um, because I thought deep down, like then these guys have got to be so fucking annoyed by this, and not there. I mean, they they have to do this is their job, right? They work for Showtime. Showtime signs a contract with Jake Paul. I think inside they're going like, this is fucking bull. This is a disrespect <laughs> to the sport. Yeah. But that it's really not gonna. Ch- take over the sport. It's not going to replace great boxing it's matches. It's another brand. That's right. It's just going to be another brand. There's, You know there's hardcore. There's a lot of people that didn't get the fight that will refuse to get the fight because they vote with their dollars and they don't yeah. want to put money towards some bullshit like this. But then there's people like me who I'm not really, I don't, I'm not that passionate about boxing. Plus you're interested more in like the What's this look like? What's yeah, the business? I am, I am very interested in what they do with it business wise. He was, was, you know, what he came out with his, uh, the his LED thing. He had an LED belt yeah. with his name running across it the whole time. Oh, <laughs> it was well, wild. look, I tell you what. If I was a fighter right now, um, and I had a bit of a business sense because you got to have that a little bit too with what's going on, and with the ease of using social media, the way I would look at this is I'd say, okay, my success is dependent on how good a boxer I am. But it's also largely on how good, well I can promote myself and get people to want to see me either beat someone or get my ass kicked. And so, to, to the truth be told, if you're a boxer or a fighter today, your opportunity for success is better because there's more now, right? There's more opportunities that are open to you to get yourself out there and make people either hate you or love you. And they just, cause like Jake Paul's not if a great If you're fighter. an outgoing person. That's, of course. It, it may look like a bigger hurdle though now if you're the opposite. If you're which, just a hard worker fighter. I, and I would, I would imagine there's a lot of guys in the, the sport of boxing that are more of course, introverts. You know, you know that's. I would been... think there are a lot of them are introverts that have a lot of shit all yeah. bent up and that's what makes them fighters. And so gotta be really frustrating if that's not your thing is to be flamboyant yeah and, dude yeah. speaking of social media okay so you know how social media can just be sometimes you look at it and you're like this is cancer let's get rid of this yeah and then other Every times day. i look at it and i'm like i thank god for social media this is a okay this is one of the best things I've ever seen so you guys know obviously we're not going to go into depth of this because it's bullshit but you saw you know what happened in afghanistan right taliban taking over anyway Ugh. one of the leaders of the taliban is on i think it's twitter and he posts the picture and he's like, you know, with his gun and he's like, do you like the suppressor on my M416 or whatever? Another guy comments on it and he goes, respectfully, what do you say to those under your rule who may have ligma? And he actually responded, this Taliban leader is like, explain this ligma. For sure, I will answer for you. And he goes, "Ligging my balls, bitch." <laughs> he, puts a, <laughs> he puts a picture of what of a guy wearing like an American speedo with explosions happening behind him. I was like, <laughs> "Yes, dude, that's the greatest comeback." Of yes, all time, dude. he got trolled on on, wow. on social media. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> that's, so, my, that's my son's favorite, by the way. That's the Patriot that. missile of comments, right there. <laughs> that's, that, my son gets me on that shit yeah. all the time. <laughs> hey, amazing. We need to talk about. The study right now that is blow. Are you guys seeing everybody? The one show- that I got DMs about that you posted. Oh, yeah. Please, uh, yeah, explain. I got so many people. Okay. So many people ruffling. You ruffled people's feathers well, by people posting. People need that. to understand what science is coming okay. out. Okay, so this was a huge study out of Israel. So Israel is one of the most vaccinated countries in the world, and they've been eighty-five percent, right? They've been tra- I think so, right? They've been tracking and studying how people. Get infected, reinfected. What are your? How much does the vaccine help? How much does previous infection help? And I got to make sure I pull up the right uh, statistics here. But in this particular study, they showed that natural immunity, so people who were infected with COVID before, had far better protection against the Delta variant than people who had uh, gotten vaccinated. Which, by the way... Uh, yeah. By the way, this is always this is I, almost always how immunity works. Just- it's also how the body adapts to things, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know nothing about this side, right? So I don't want to pretend like I know anything about immunology or whatever the fuck it's called. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. anything about that, and I'm not, like, speaking as an expert. But what I do know about is about exercise and fitness and how the body adapts and a lot of the systems in the body. A healthy, resilient body. And... and Anytime you do something artificially to try and and well, it's mimic, uh, replicate to, what the body could potentially do, do naturally, yeah. uh, it's it's always inferior. It's all naturally is always a better if you can. Now that being said, and that, like I had to defend your post like in my DMs all day that day was Sal is not encouraging or discouraging anybody from doing anything. He's no. just 
he's all he's doing is posting the sign. I said I told I was I called my mom and my dad. Said, you need to go get this vaccine. Yeah. You need to go do this. You know why? Because they're an advanced age. They're yeah. fat and they're low vitamin D. Yeah. Like I absolutely I would rather them take the risk with High that. Risk factors even there. it being yeah. not passed by the FDA. I, I told them go get that. Please go get that because I'm more afraid of what COVID would do to them. Yeah. For sure. I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not advocating. They even said this in the study that people throw like COVID party. Like when we were kids, you know, oh, people like don't chicken know this. pox parties. Yes, yeah, when, dude. So when I was a kid, when we were kids, chicken pox, uh, there was no vaccine for it, Bro. and you got it, and it was very rare that a kid died from it. But it sucked. You were sick for like a week, and then you had lifetime immunity. Parents used to actually do this. Did you? Where, did you go to one as a kid? No, but my cousins got it, and I remember my mom being like, well, oh. "Okay, cool. Well, now my oh, kid's gonna get it too." To so, one, dude. so oh, you guys sent to a yeah, party, dude? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, some of, some of my friends like in their what do they serve at a chicken box party? <laughs> I don't know, but just we were curious. all playing in a room, and then you know we're just hanging out like. And the, how weird is that if you're a parent, right? Like I was yeah. thinking about go that. roll around with like, yeah, they're, they're all like watching, like drinking, you know, <laughs> like as weird. we're all playing, and you know, oh, pass the plane blocks over to your friend. Now we used to do this because chicken pox as an adult is really bad. As a kid, it's not so bad in comparison. So we would have kids hang out with each other. Oh, you got chicken pox. Ironically, that's what we're finding out about COVID too, right? Is that it's way worse for uh, advanced age. It it is is worse for adults. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but so the study showed, I'll read to you guys some statistics that by the way, in this particular study, they did show like other studies that the vaccine was better than nothing. In other words, if you didn't get previous infection, uh, the vaccine did provide protection, like other studies have shown. But in comparison to well, previous- lessen the symptoms, right? So lower chance of getting infected, lower uh, chance of getting severe COVID, like uh, across the board, better than nothing, okay? But in comparison to previously infected, check this out. The vaccinated individuals had 27 times higher risk of symptomat- symptomatic COVID infection compared to those with natural immunity. So in other words, uh, that's a big difference. And they showed long-lasting effects. By the way- That's the like, thing to talk about right there, because that's yes. the other thing that I keep, I keep hearing from people. I had to have this conversation with my buddy too. It's just like, well, that's stupid. Your natural antibodies are only good for six months. I'm like, okay. I've heard people say three to four months. I'm like, no. Your vaccine too. Like, yeah. like the vaccine wanes too. Not only that, but there's something to be said about uh, about the body having to go through that, and then how it adapts to get go, and the resiliency yeah. it builds from that. Forget yeah. the fact that it makes you immune to something for three to six months or whatever like that, but the body going through that and what it how it evolves. It's how we've evolved in time all yeah. over all these hundreds well, thousands of years. Well, studies are showing that there's probably in a lot of people there's a long term protective effect. Probably not forever, so you you'll probably wane over time, just like the vaccines do like we're finding now. But the reason why this is such a, a, a um, incredible study, first off, yeah, don't go to a COVID party. I, I personally know somebody who's my age who is fighting for their life right now. So it is very interesting how some people react. I had it very mild. So did my family. I know the, the rest of the guys in here had it very mild. So it's nothing to play with. There's, you know, you don't want to roll the dice necessarily. But here's where this really is a big deal. This puts the nail in the coffin for these mandates that are being passed in other countries because almost none of them, I think there's one country if I'm not mistaken, but the rest don't consider whether or not you were previously infected. So it's like vaccine or not, you have to be vaccinated or not. And if you're not, then we won't let you in our restaurants and stuff. Or at least the government, I should say, makes these mandates. They don't count previously infected. And there's a lot of people who have natural immunity. In mm-hmm. fact, there's there's a hundred million or more people who've got infected we have natural immunity. None of these passports even consider that. And then there's lots of other reasons why. You know, well, that was the big thing that I. So I still have this thread I talk about with my my two best friends, and we're we're all different politically, and of course, all this bullshit has charged everybody so much yeah. and divided even some of the, which is so frustrating to me to see how much division there is amongst friends and family oh, today yeah. than just two or three three decades ago. But the, the, the main thing that I was trying to tell my buddies is like, I'm, I'm not anti any of this. I just don't want mandates and the government to force us to have to do this. Like yeah. if you, I said, if you go do it, I'm totally support it. Even though I think you're young and healthy and I wouldn't, if I'm in your situation, doesn't mean that I'm like against you going to do it. Yeah. Go for it. You should. I told my parents to do it, but to uh, give the government control and let them get involved in saying what we should or shouldn't be able to do, that's what you got to be careful Especially of. Especially if you look at, um, okay, so just in California alone, 40% of the population 
roughly would not uh, be able to get uh, be able to get access to restaurants and shops and stuff like that because they're not vaccinated. So you lock down businesses for a long ass time in California, yeah. hammered small businesses. Now we're going to cut forty percent. Decimated small businesses. Now we're going to cut forty percent, and then of that forty percent, a majority of them are minorities. So not only are we eliminating forty percent of the customers, we're also taking minorities, and they're the ones that are getting affected the most. Oh, you can't do, you can't go eat in these restaurants, or you can't <laughs> go to these cafes. So it's a, it's a very interesting uh, policy, and then w- the fact that people who had previous uh, in, you know infection have better immunity. And here's another one: oftentimes, a lot of these policies are passed or things that we do without data. Did you guys see the study on plastic partitions? You know the when you go to no. the grocery store, there's a plastic partition between. Oh you yeah, and yeah. The, no, I heard you talking about that. Yeah, because sure those are a waste. So it's just it's just another thing that shows you're doing something. Right. So part, right? it's like oh, you know, I'm going to put up plastic partitions, and some cities actually re- like required them. You have to have. Yeah. You know what they found in studies? Yeah. Increases, probably worse because it probably sticks to the fucking glass. It's not just that <laughs> because it it, re- it reduces airflow. Because oh, wow. of the airflow is now oh, wow. interrupted in this study, they show. Oh, wow. So it just lingers right of course. there. Yes. Of course. Yeah. And then there, there's also studies on mask mandates, and they compared them to states without mask mandates and looking at the difference. And then they're counting total deaths, not just infections, but other deaths and whatever, and lockdowns. They compared lockdowns, and they found that the lockdowns in particular – um, not only did not have a, a, a beneficial effect, they actually caused more other unintended deaths, like suicide, drug abuse, mm. people not getting services that they need. All things we don't consider when we pass these things. So yeah. we have to be very, very careful is all I'm saying. Well, speaking of other drugs, Doug, I'm going to transition us out of this conversation before your head explodes. Uh, <laughs> Jane Technologies, keep an eye on this company. So I think they just went, I think they went public now. I know they just took on like another $100 million dollars. Uh, they are like the uh, shop. They're the software Shopify for the weed industry. So think of what Shopify has done for e-commerce. Uh, Jane Technologies is responsible for the software that's embedded in a lot of these dispensaries and the back end work. So keep an eye on that business. Wow. Hmm, right now, now where are they okay because it's not federally legal. That's not a national company, right? So it's only where California or so I don't know how that all works, right? Like I know, I mean, what's the company that we we worked with for briefly there? That Ease. Uh, yeah, Ease. I mean, they they're all online, and and I know they're growing rapidly. And go, I don't know what states they're in right now, and. Uh, how that like I know like gambling there's like gray areas like that too where you could order from or you could you can bet uh, online mm-hmm. because technically even if that even if that state doesn't allow you because they can say that the home base is somewhere you know else like, f- I know there's a lot of loopholes Dude, right as soon as because but no matter what it's going that way yeah we, we know that oh yeah as soon as because it's for sure happening as soon <laughs> as they lift the federal you know schedule one classification for marijuana and allow crazy. it to be oh my god yeah it'll blow up. It's going to, and there's already businesses that are so primed and ready. Uh, like there's businesses in well, California. Well, like a company like that. Imagine yeah. um, that's why I was, keep an eye on that. And uh, I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't know if they're still considered private. I know they took on some funding. So keep an eye on this company, Jane Technologies. Should be easy to remember, Mary Jane, right? So Jane Technologies. Mm-hmm. If and when they do go public, or you have opportunity to invest or get a part of, I and they're leaders in that space. I mean, just imagine being able to get a hold of Shopify early on as in for e-commerce, like what that's done. So I just think that these those are, and I love businesses like that, like getting directly in it. It's very competitive, yeah. right? If you're gonna go out and try and make your own strain or be a farmer or start a dispensary right now. I don't think that's smart business, but if you can find some of these companies that are assisting that, yes. and it's. I like that. Yeah, like so it handles all their e-commerce and like yeah, little, you know what Shopify is for us, right? What, Shopify yeah. is software that so we can sell apparel and stuff yeah. online. They are s- software specific because I'm sure Shopify doesn't do marijuana. So if someone oh, had to right. come up com- with a competitor, so they're they're they are the Shopify basically of the uh, medical marijuana field. Okay. Wow, so that's thought, fascinating. I know. I thought that was kind of an interesting one. All right, so um, I read something today that I thought was really interesting. So you guys are familiar with like you know records in bench press, squat, deadlift, right? The Olympic records. You got, do you guys know that there are competitions for what's called a strict curl? Have you guys seen these? Really? No. Okay, so and this is big. This is actually becoming a thing. So you have to, I think you have to lean up against a board. You have a weight. It has to start a barbell. It has to start at your thighs, and you can't come off the back of the board. And you have to curl the weight all the way up. Ooh, kind of okay. cool. Okay, so it's called a strict curl. 
and you have to have this particular positioning in order to do it. Mm-hmm. And so people are competing in it and seeing how much they can lift. Someone, I love it. Someone set the world record. It was a, what, a what's the power guess? lifter, Leroy Walker. What's the guess on the weight? Don't say it. Don't tell I'm us. Just gonna say, what's the, what do you guys think the, the record is for a strict curl? For remember, strict. So, you can't remember, rock. You can't no, bounce. Your is back this with is against the easy the wall. bar or is it with a barbell? No, like? it's an easy bar. You're up against the wall and you can't come off the wall at all. So, you're so only stack your arms 45s can move. on it. Yeah. Let's say, what, what would that weigh? I'm going to say 250. What do you think, Justin? Uh, I say 225. You hit it around the net. Oh! 250 pounds. Wow. It says it's a little more than what I can do, so I figured that was probably somebody out there a little bit stronger than me. 200. (laughs) (laughs) If I could do 245, there's got to be somebody who could get five. When I read it, I was like, wow, one arm? And I'm like, oh, two? I don't know. 250, is that right, huh? 250. If I win a prize, Doug, something for that one? What, for guessing? Yeah. Yeah, no, you don't win anything. (laughs) We'll give you a, yeah, I don't know, we'll give you a bell. (laughs) Ding. Um, What's the most you guys have ever curled? I know it's not really something you brag about, but since we're on the topic. Dude, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I, know you definitely, I definitely know you have no idea. Um, you know, I know I've done 135s yeah, in workouts before, for sure. I've done the wheels. Um, I can't, to be honest with you, I don't know if I've ever put more than the 45s on there. So I'd have to say 135. But I know I was doing that for more than one rep. I swung a little bit, right? Instead of not against the wall. Like, yeah, I didn't do I the, I, do yeah, that. They, I, I don't think they had passed regulation, but they're, I, I trained pretty strict, so they weren't ugly. Now, did you do on a straight bar? Yeah. Oh, see, it hurts my wrist if I go too heavy on that. I have oh, to use a curl bar oh, yeah. if I go that heavy. I don't know what my most is That's ever. That's an exercise I never really push like that. I've used some pretty heavy dumbbells. Yeah, I've and, never done singles, so I don't know what my max would be. I worked out with, I've worked up to 135 before yeah. so i i don't know what. it feels like a bicep tear like i don't know you know what i mean i feel like if i went and tried this that wouldn't be a oh yeah thing. i would never try it right now i'm not in that kind of shit yeah for very sure. interesting that they do competitions on this no i the one i was curious at doing was uh when we had the kettlebell competition in here they had a new event that they had it was the bottoms up kettlebell press oh, i thought that was really cool because they would keep going up in size to see like how far you could go uh like weight wise uh, with with it bottoms up and it was you'd see the guys like start shaking and like really trying to stabilize. Was that was that event in there? Yeah. Oh, that was they in there. They threw that huh? in the yeah. That was a very new event. I thought that was really cool. You know what's cool about lifts when they start when you start to see people compete for strength is you start to see um, technique evolve. And you start to see because the goal is not to activate the most muscle or whatever. It's all about obviously moving the most weight. And it's really cool to see when people uh, break through and come up with a new technique, for example, you guys know the high jump, right? In uh, in the Olympics, not the one with the stick. Mm. What's the one with the stick? Pole vault. Pole vault. The yeah. one where they just run and jump. Oh yeah. yeah. So they th- at first they they approached it forward, right? And yeah. then they turn their body backwards so they can yeah. like use physics. There was one guy. Yeah. yeah. So originally you run and you jump with your legs over it. It's so funny you're bringing this up because the guy who jumped forward is the guy who was the record holder before Bruce Jenner built him or beat him. I just watched that. Documentary. Oh, so the guy. You mean the first guy to jump backwards over it? Well, no, he wasn't. The, uh, Jenner wasn't the first guy to jump backwards, but the there's the a guy ru- who, dro- the, who yeah, there was a rushing guy who was like the decathlon champion oh. and he actually did the and the high jump was one of his best events and he actually technically still beat jenner in that event jenner beat him in the, the whole in the that, that documentary series yes on dude if you guys have not watched that's the newest it's now the third one right so you you brought up um the female boxer yeah christy, uh, christy martin, martin. Oh. then they did the the malice in the palace one and yeah. then now they just did bruce jenner and I actually really enjoyed the Bruce Jenner story. I didn't know, um, I didn't know his whole story. I didn't, I like, I knew that he was a badass. I didn't know that he he won like the decathlon gold medal. Oh, bro, he was oh, on he the was box of Weedy. Oh, yeah. he was a big deal. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I know a little bit about that, right? I didn't know exactly. I didn't know if it was for a specific event. Mm-hmm. I didn't know, like, I, honestly, I didn't even know all the events of a decathlon. What it, what it what it encompasses, like mm-hmm. back then, or I maybe even still today. I don't know. It's con- that's like considered the, they say the the fittest athlete in the world. Yeah. So if you win the decathlon, because it requires well rounded, yeah, mm-hmm. such yeah, you, you have to have endurance, you have to have speed, you have to have a strength. vertical, yeah, strength. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has kind of everything, and so that was a big deal for him. Uh, his training leading up to that. I also didn't know that he actually tried to transition back in like '99. I didn't know that. Either did I. Mm-hmm. I thought when he, you know, they came out and he won the the, the Woman of the Year award or whatever like that. Yeah. I thought it was, I know, right? I we, I think I everybody kind of chuckled or scoffed about how, how kind of ridiculous that is. But 
I will say that I had no idea how long he was kind of suffering with this, like living well, as this well, life that he didn't wife, feel aligned with. Yeah, apparently he told his wife way yeah, before. Bro, he, they ninety nine. They knew he was he was already starting the surgeries and transitions back in ninety nine. Oh, so he did like hormones, and, and stuff even or? before that, he was already expressing it to his wife and stuff. Wow. So they've known for. Oh, really? Hey, we I'll, only found out in the 2000s something, right? But to think that he had been going through that hey, long. Hey, I'll tell you something right now. Caitlin, if you see her in her political ads, because right now in California, this is a yeah, like, recall thing going on. Uh, actually, yeah. great. Which, uh, which yeah, I hope happens because Gavin's evil. Anyway, yes. in my opinion. 100%. But Caitlin is a really good politician. Mm -hmm. If you see her commercials... She's like smart with what she hits oh, yeah. and how she positions She's it. Coming in with the heat. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be very, very interesting. Yeah. You know, then Larry like, Elder came in. Well, back like, back when Caitlyn was Bruce, man, I dude, that dude was a freaking oh, yeah. a phenom. Oh, like, yeah. He was such an athlete. And what's kind of interesting is the driving force behind that was not being who he really wanted to be. And just that, that was a way for him to escape. Oh. So he never took a day off. This dude trained like every single, and they had all kinds of people come on that like confirmed like his training and talked about he buried himself so much into training for the sport hmm. that he didn't kind of have to live in the outside wow. world. This is yeah. like an escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, wow. uh, really good, really well done. I tell you what, Netflix. Is, uh, you convinced me. Yeah, I'll, they've I'll watch done. The series. You should watch all three of them all because mm -hmm. even though it's not maybe yeah, stuff Mouse in the palace was good. stuff that, that you guys were. Oh, you ended up watching uh -huh. it. Yeah. It was good, right? It was good. It was good to hear. The it's like, and if you like those, I told you a long time ago on the podcast. I said I wanted you, and I know you've never done it, but ESPN has what they have. They call their thirty for thirty yeah. series. And it's cut. It's very. It's definitely what's competitive with that. It's they. They, they take these stories that a lot of people may not know everything about. Well, sports always has really good clips to pull from. You yeah. know, and so oh. they they put it together. Yeah, like, they had all really well. They had all kinds of like home footage of him back in like the eighties and stuff like oh, that. I'll check that out. Yeah, I'll it was, check it was out really sure. good. Really, all right. Really good. Well, um, here's something that sucks. Uh, so <laughs> we Let's we take us out of the positive. Yeah. <laughs> no. This this sucks because this was a, a company that. Uh, we had invested in. Oh, invested I know what you're in. talking about. And then I invested in on my own, and then us as a company, right, took our our, our winnings or we whatever. Sold we sold it when we we made 35 or 39 percent off. Yeah, that. I left mine in there because I'm like, oh, I think this Peloton. Oh yeah, under so investigation. Glad, I'm so glad we slashing out. their prices. They're under, you know, they're under investigation. Yes, by the government. They, so what they, happened? Is it some about they, the treadmill? There weren't, weren't all their people their, falling on the treadmill? Oh, no. And then the, like the government subpoena, like all the de the data that they have supposedly collected on people. Yes. What? Yeah, because people were falling wow. off treadmills, and I don't know how many were people were falling off, and what the deal was. Wow. And I don't know what politician <laughs> was angry with Peloton. This uh, is what you got to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. You know, because companies can partner with government and they can give each other favors. And sometimes they can piss each other off. And when they do, it's literally they can subpoena you. You can come out of it being okay. But the simple fact that you got subpoenaed. Where's where's the stock at now? I I'll, kept I've kept a few shares, but we I mean, we definitely I'll, I'll check that right one. now because I'm sure it tanked. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen it lower than 70 something. So. Oh, it's not. Okay. It's 100. Oh, but at its peak oh, was okay. at, at its peak. Well, yeah, we sold like, it like 140 or 160. Yeah, or something it was up like, at 160. Yes, and I think yeah. I bought it at like 120, so now I'm in the red, which oh, kind of sucks. Wow, wow. I know, I know. But what are you going to do? Wow. Yeah, dude. That's really, wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, so people were falling off. But I have family members and stuff that own their, their oh, products. Yeah. And they, I do too, yeah. And I mean, seen, it was super popular. They, I, again, wasn't that like the number one Christmas present or, or whatever? Like yes. the last year? No, or and two? no, here's the thing. That's what, the reason why I was asking where the price is, because if it drops below 70, I still would buy. Because the, all this bad pub, they're going to lose money. The next quarter leaves right. come it might out. Be a good opportunity. They're going to look awful. So that's going to dip the stock. But I mean, it, all the people I know that own them, and we you guys know we're not big cardio guys, so I'm not like a fan like that. But no. all the people I know that have them, and I know a lot of people that own them, they love them. Love them. Mm -hmm. they Absolutely do. love them. I think the technology is brilliant. I think the community they built, the cult that following they have. I just think right now they're going to get a ton of bad pub. They're probably going to lose some money right now, and that that's going to drive the price down. So I think it'd be a good buy. So I'd keep an eye on it still. Mm -hmm. If it drops below the 70 mark, yeah. I, I would jump back Speaking on. Speaking of a good buy, they need assault bikes now to do it instead. I doubt it. <laughs> Yeah. I doubt the average. I doubt the average People person. Be, will, <laughs> yeah, yeah, be much. You better. have to be like a cardio lover to like. Bro, bikes. they'll subpoena them for people throwing up. Is what they'll do. Why are people throwing up <laughs> using your assault bike? That yeah. is really interesting, though, how they can go after them for something like that. 
I, I'm, I swear to God, it feels like they're, unless they totally lying, I don't know, but it feels like they pissed off the wrong politician hmm. who now is like, all right, we're going to subpoena Do you know you any of the political views behind Peloton? I know nothing. I don't know. I'm making either. pure, you know, this is- Now so, I want to research that. Yeah, this see, is when I do my it. lizard people uh, conspiracy <laughs> speculation. <laughs> anyway, lizard speaking job. of buying stuff, so the past few episodes I've been drinking out of my, my you know, fitness and freedom mirror, you know, flask or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Tons and tons of people had no idea that we even have these. Yeah. And they're going crazy. Yeah. So if you want to get one, you can go to the Mind Pump store. And that's what it says on it. Fitness and freedom. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And if you don't want that, because you're you're not like a, Too you're awesome not a cool thing. person. Yeah. You're not into the American flag or anything. You could always go to Mirror and do all kinds of stuff yourself. So you can get them through us where you can go do your Where'd, own. You custom. put stickers all over yours. Where is it? Right here. Where's oh, your, right. yeah. What are your stickers show there? Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, Stay you all the mind pump uh, mind sticks. Pump. Did you guys put stickers on your binders when you were a kid? Remember yes, binders? Of course. Yeah, amidst all my like drawings, uh, <laughs> your penis penises drawings, and yeah, Mario Brothers guys. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just what I did. You drew the helicopter. Yeah, dude. Clouds. <laughs> you know, you know, tanks with with dongs. Why? All that oh. stuff. We, you never told it worked us really why, well. By the way. I don't know, cause it's just <laughs> funny. You know, it was funny, and people were always like appalled, and that <laughs> made me laugh. So, do you remember? Did you guys remember uh, Trapper Keepers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember those? Oh yeah. yeah. Do kids even use binders anymore? I don't know. Well, a, I mean, they have like those the spiral, but like so, my kids have those for class, and so they still journal. Just those. The, the like the Mead ones. Mm -hmm. Is that the brand? Yeah, yeah. Is that still the brand? Is that yeah? The, yeah okay. Like that, yeah. What were the ones called? Uh, what were the the folders? It was like a generic folder, yellow, like, and it had pictures of like the those sports. Up, yes. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking what about. What were those called? Peaches. Peach. What were they? I think they're peachy. Something peachy or something mm. like that. Peaches, I think. Carp capichi or something. Why? And the, why did all the schools have that? Were they, was it something that like our testing came in or something like that? Because I remember you used to get those. Yeah, I I think that, I don't think. I know exactly what you're talking about. They're like this kind of off yellow color. And then there's lines. Like, like there's like, like uh, silhouettes of like people playing sports and stuff and either like kind of a red or orange kind of color. Yeah, Doug, you got to find the you name. You got it, Doug? You got it? Let's see I'm it. going crazy. Yes. Yes. Oh, see, what I, is that oh, called? Yeah. I nailed that. It's called yeah, totally a peachy. It really? Peachy. Yes. So it's a vin that's a vintage. Pe I had the exact one. I, I think everybody did. Everybody so had the same I think, one. I think everybody did and didn't. It wasn't it something I didn't buy. I don't remember buying. It. I remember I received it from school. Yeah. So didn't we, I think we got. I think you go buy them at the store. Well, yeah, I'm sure you could, but I don't I you guys. Like, I feel like you. I don't. Just, do you ever? I mean, I would okay, you ever buy that? I didn't okay, buy but that. did you guys take brown paper bags yes. and wrap your books with them? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you could draw on it. Yes, yeah, so you draw on it. So that was probably so when you brought up the stickers and things like that, and that was that was trapper keeper era for me, which yes. is like fifth grade, sixth grade. When I when we had to get to high school and you had to make your own book covers, mm -hmm. you would do the brown paper bags inside out and then you would draw yeah. and write shit. Okay, all over. so so check this out, right? So I have these conversations now. My son sixteen, my daughter's about to turn twelve, and so now I get to tell them like, oh yeah, when I was and it's How weird cool explain it's weird explaining yeah. it to them because they don't get it. So here's something. So obviously there's fads with clothes and sometimes in fashion and sometimes a fad becomes really popular for a short period of time and then it disappears. And you know what I remembered that I told my kids and they looked at me like my generation was the dumbest generation of all time? Do you guys remember when for a short period of time it was cool to wear shit backwards? Oh, you mean crisscross. Yeah, like crisscross. Yeah. crisscross. Yeah. yeah. What the hell were we thinking? This is stupid. That Very, was so dumb. That, that, that was short lived. That was short lived. Pants. Exactly. But yeah. everybody did. You wear yeah. your you wear overalls. Everybody wore overalls. That's because they. So I don't. Okay. See if you can remember. Like so. I think what made them so unique is they were like one of the youngest like rap groups to ever explode. So yeah. It. it I think all the kids like got drawn to it really. And quick. they wore what, everything were back. They, like ten years old or something. They were really young. Look up with Chris Cross out when they first. How old they were when they, jump. Jump. when they first jump. started, but Daddy, a lot of I jumping got... songs back yeah. then, by the way. All, it was all about jumping. Yeah, yeah. but in I mean, the 90s. but they wore everything backwards, and I literally remember. I think it was junior high. Kids would show up to school wearing a polo backwards, wearing overalls backwards, and this was a style. So it didn't I, told, hit, I told my kids this. They looked at me like I was. Crazy. It didn't really hit my school. That now I grew up in like a hick town, so it wasn't mm, so. It's hard like, to wear boots backwards. Right? Yeah, and so it wasn't. <laughs> it was. I saw. I remember going places and honkies. seeing people wearing clothes backwards. So I totally remember. <laughs> Did you say honkies. Yeah, honkies. Yeah. <laughs> that was always my favorite. Like cut low yeah, for white people. That's such a terrible. That's bunch like of the, honkies. That's like <laughs> the that's the worst racist way I've ever heard of. Cracker honkies. Like, oh, what's it from? What's the origin? Jeffersons. 
Well, I don't know if is there's that, an origin. I have no idea. But I just the, always love that one. It's got to mean something, though. What's honky mean? I have no idea. It probably has a terrible... Like, of course it does. I'm is curious, like, though. It, like, honky-tonk? Is that a thing? Like, you know, and it, you're the country guy. I yeah. know. I feel like I should know this, but yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't I, know. Well, I, you know, when I grew up in country, I, I was teased for be, my, my Mexican background. Oh, right. So when I was in, like, Honkyville, I was being teased for being Mexican. It was when I got to the Bay Area, I got teased for being white. Yeah. So it just depends on where the fuck I was yeah, at. Come on, man. Depends on who I'm getting... Bu- I got bullied by both sides. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we had crisscross people at my school, and uh, I, I, my one of my good friends was was all about it, and I was like waiting. I was like, I was like the house of pain guy once of they course. came out because, like, I, you know, dude, when you're trying to kind of like identify with something, I was like, oh, they're Irish. You're like, yeah. yeah, cool. Angry Irish dudes rapping. I, I want to see. Like um, yeah, I want to see chums come back. I want to bring. Yeah, they're just they're they're, they're useful chum? yeah, chums. You don't remember Chums? No. You remember Chums? Tell me you remember Chums. I do. Yeah. But so I... Chums are the they were they were those uh, for your glasses mm-hmm. for your sunglasses. Oh God. I and do they, remember that. Yeah, yeah and they had all the different. <laughs> yes, they're, they're just so, so functional. Silly. You know, don't you hate? I hate right now where like so I had my glasses on. I went in the grocery yeah. store and like you have nowhere to put it. it. Looks stupid when you wear it around your shirts. You stretches yeah. them out. You put them on your head. Yeah. So they're just it's like one of those things. I'm, I'm surprised. Man, those chums haven't used to be come cool. back. I'm, I'm really surprised, surprised too. Yeah. They, they still exist, and every once in a while, you see like a dad rocking. You'll it. see him in in um, uh, 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 Michael Jackson video. I think it was like bad. Yeah, know? they're still. I mean, there's there's the still guy around. puts his glasses on. He's got those. Yes. Oh, that looked dorky. No, yeah. they're not that oh, bad. Really? They even right. had the, the the tie in the back, so you could like cinch it. So you up could cinch it tight. So in case you're doing some something really whoa, active, whoa, whoa, whoa. you know whoa. what I'm saying? So they wouldn't fall off. That's we'll bad. get that yeah. back with yeah. the Zubaz pants, dude. Because you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a hammer. It, like the, I had like bone fish on mine. <laughs> oh dude. my god, this is, oh, it, this oh, is stylish. A terrible transition, but I I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about it because I saw someone DM me, and I know I'll forget about it if I don't bring it up. Um, you know, we talk about how fucked up California is, yeah. right? Yeah. So in Riverside, there is this this husband and wife that bought a house 14 months ago. So whatever, do the math on when, when exactly that is. So 14 months ago, they bought a house and they still have not been able to move into their house and they've been paying the mortgage for it for 14 months. Is that why? Because the previous the, owner the took advantage of the, the, the moratorium and the COVID laws and was refusing, basically... Bunkered down and said, "I ain't going nowhere." And they're paying the mortgage, wow. and they have to pay the mortgage because that that has to do with the banks and them having to pay the new loan that they had to buy this house. So, and then the laws protect him for squatting reasons and that he can't be okay. evicted and kicked out. So let's let's all come up with a strategy right now. Let's wow. imagine that's us. Imagine you buy one of you guys. Oh, you know, what I'm getting. Oh, I'm I'm moving in. <laughs> Is what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, I'm showing I'm up with you, and I'm like, I'm yeah. living here too, dude. I'm gonna make your life a living hell, and I'm gonna walk around naked, and I'm gonna fart. What an awful yeah. experience, though. Come on, because oh, no, then it is. It's just like a who's who's willing to put up with more shit. You know how weird that. Or would be? I would go on Craigslist and be like, uh, five dollars a month rent, you can live in this house, and I'd have a. That's bunch what of I would do is there. that. So I would, I wouldn't, I would never put myself or my family through something that risky, torturous, or whatever like that. So it's funny to say that, but you wouldn't do that. I know who you was the because you. Would not bring your kids, your no. wife, yeah. to with some weirdo that's willing to do that. But yeah. what I would do is I would go broke paying other people to make his fucking life miserable. Yes. Well, d- I would pay people to go in that house and be there whenever yeah. they want to be there. This and just- reminds me of there was this like corporate, th- these people got busted because um, I forget like which corporation it was, but they were sending uh, like, like, uh, a group of swingers to, to this person's house and would say like the the time that everyone was supposed to meet. Oh, I heard this. And then they they would come like it, like they were supposed to have this big sex party. It was a prank that someone was pulled. A, it, yeah, it was a prank, but it was like they kept doing these things to the to uh, basically um, you know like berate this. Uh, these people that are opposed to something uh, that this corporation was doing. I oh. read that. Where he's like, yeah, I'm trying to remember you. what it was. He's yeah, like, jokes on you. Come yeah. on in. It's like you order like pizza to trick your friend. They're like, cool, thanks. I'll yeah, eat this yeah. pizza. Yeah. I, I, hey, I like anchovies. I don't care. I, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I, I read? Also, I can't remember if I read it in the Hustle or my Morning Brew or whatever. But uh, reading about Joe Rogan and the whole you know uh, Spotify acquisition with him and everything like that. Uh, what's your guys' theories on like how that's working out? You have any? You guys have any theories on how that's so, working out? So, what were they bringing up in the article that basically the numbers of what he lost versus? Oh, what did you he read gained? it? I just heard, like a little bit. I just bet briefly. He, I bet he's got a smaller audience. That's what. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's like actually down. so the now of course there's 
lots of speculation here. One, we don't know the exact number. There's rumors it's somewhere between 100 and under 200 million. So the there, I, I've heard uh, Brendan Schaub confirm confirm that it's more than a hundred. Right. Uh, I've heard people say as high as two hundred. Oh, the, how much they paid him? Yeah. How much okay. did he make? Right. So I think the the, the buyout was somewhere between a hundred. So let's just say one hundred fifty million dollars mm-hmm. is probably what he, somewhere in that that vicinity that he got paid to give exclusive rights. But I mean, he I guess he is completely lost his rights to really market and advertise to his audience almost every way. That's hmm. part of what I think they they got by getting getting him over. So the audience supposedly has shrank the, and they use like uh YouTube downloads. They use like yeah. his well, consistent YouTube growth was huge with, for his audience for sure. And it completely is. Yeah, it's, it's no all, reason. it's slowed down uh, dramatically. And the, now there's also, you could speculate that Joe has also came out and has been talking a lot more uh, open about his feelings on this, COVID this, yeah, and all yeah. this. So that, so, you know, it could be more that that maybe maybe hurting him right now. I'm sure or, it has to do with less accessibility. If yeah, you don't have I Spotify, more, you don't have yeah, access. Whereas before, it was very accessible. That's what, and that's yeah. the conclusion that they're coming up with. That that, and not only that, but they think that the, what he gave up for that. And when you think about it, uh, I mean, you think about what our you know our little humble business that we built over here, and we're nowhere near the size of Joe Rogan. Um, uh, you know, a hundred million dollars. If you've built a really successful business, and imagine his size. Imagine if he had the the infrastructure that we've built here with our tiny business. With that, like a hundred million dollars. I know you guys wouldn't take a hundred million dollars for no. that. Yeah. There's no way. You Unless you're like ready to, unless you're trying to cash out and be done. Yeah, like whatever. But I'll he's not podcast. cashing out. He's got to work. Which I don't know what the contract. Do you guys remember it? Was it was it like a five or a ten year? Yeah, contract? I was going to say how long was the contract? Yeah, I think it locked him up for a while, so he ain't retiring or going anywhere for a while. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, hey, interesting. Did Spotify? Is this was this a good or bad investment for, for them? Spotify came out. Yeah. Because it's growing there because oh, yeah. Joe had so much pool that some people said, oh, I'm going to download Spotify now and start paying for Spotify just so I get access to Joe Rogan. So he's he, it was a steal for them. So $100 million for someone who has that much influence and power, that's kind of what the article was saying. It was like he undersold himself for sure. So mm-hmm. regardless if... He, you know, it, it's been, a, you know, it was, a, it was a big cash out, so that's great. But the potential of money that that guy can make, but with it's kind of smart though, because like, imagine how many of his uh, YouTube podcasts would have been flagged and pulled. You know, he was going through that a bunch. It's like, true. You know, like well, the I'm sure that I'm sure crazy. that I'm sure that had a lot to do with why he made the deal. Right. Yeah. He was probably getting tired of all that bullshit and censoring and, mm-hmm. and risking it. You know, getting pulled, and so I'm sure that right. might have helped persuade him to do it but i just thought it was interesting that his it's you know stuff came out that he, his audience it makes sense to your point sal that yes yeah, you, re- you restrict uh people that can see it hey real quick before we transition to the questions you know how i mentioned get this on our store doug just put up on the screen here that there's gonna be a huge labor day sale so all the stuff on our store oh nice is gonna be on sale uh over the labor day weekend so that's coming up i forgot yeah, it's coming yeah, up yeah. Labor we got day. a lot of stuff in there dude all of our uh, trx bands actually we you know she's call them suspense Suspension bands, yeah, <laughs> yeah. suspension trainers, not, not actual yeah. brand, yeah. but uh, yeah, no. We got I a lot just of stuff. did you see that? So yesterday was my first workout. I haven't. Oh yeah, so you are you back? Yeah, well, yeah, it was my official first like full workout, and I wasn't sure how it was going to go. It actually went really good, so I felt your great. energy looks a lot better. I felt you look healthier. I felt mm-hmm. great. Plus, we all got haircuts. Thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah. thank God, you, Vicky. Vicky came back. Yeah, you, were, you were starting Ooh, to look a little you. Talibanish yeah, for a second dude, there. Was <laughs> He's getting pretty <laughs> bad. Beer, so. in a cave. Never again could she have two weeks off. That can't, yeah. can't happen again. Most so. bunkered out. But no, you know, I was I was talking to my uh, Instagram audience that, um, and I and I shared on that story because. You know, we really don't promote the suspension training program that much. I mean, we, we did it at the very beginning of, of COVID because obviously it was uh, when we yeah. couldn't get equipment. I think it was a good alternative. But, you know, this is uh, this is an example of where I really like something like this. I think it's, it has tremendous value by itself. I think it's amazing if you're traveling and on the go and it's just all you need. You could do it from a tree if you wanted mm-hmm. to. Um, but I also think that this is a great time for someone like me who's consistently lifting barbell, dumbbell exercises. And then all of a sudden I have this three, four weeks where I completely don't do anything. It's a great way for me to reintroduce exercise back. I mean, I, I'm literally sore everywhere. It stabilizes the whole body. Yeah. It gets you prepared. And it feels well. like that too. Like for my, I'm doing like push-ups on uh, it. And I can just feel everything shaking yeah, and trembling. Really forces that, the issue. Oh, that sure. CNS just waking up and firing and... So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run through our suspension training program 
with a little bit of a modification. I'm going to do some things a little bit different, but I'm going to follow it oh, cool. pretty closely. So people for will a while. be able to watch the show and see the transformation. Yeah, so I'm going to start doing it. But I, again, it's a, I think a great place when you haven't been training consistently to kind of re restart you back in before doing heavy barbell lifts. Real quick, I hope you're enjoying this episode. Go check out one of our partners. Olipop. Now, they make these really tasty sodas that remind me a lot of the drinks that I had when I was a kid. For example, the one I'm holding my hand is strawberry vanilla. It tastes really good. But here's the trippy part. Uh, no sugar or very little sugar. Sorry, three grams of sugar, 35 calories, and it has compounds that are good for your gut health. So this is a soda that tastes like the sodas you grew up drinking, except very low calorie, almost no sugar, and it's good for for your gut. No joke. I'm not making this up. Head over to drinkolipop.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 15% off your purchase. All right. Enjoy the rest of this episode. First question is from Ren Amimaya. How do you make your biceps appear thicker when viewed from the front? I've been doing wide grip curls and pull-ups, but only the peak seems to grow. Okay, so in some cases... Get close to the camera like so. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> That's an arm right there, Justin. Always hide those bad boys. Uh, so here's the here's the issue. With some muscles, you can target and shape because they're large and because they have attachments that are a little further away from each other. For example, theoretically, you could work more of the upper chest than the lower chest just because of the attachments here on the sternum. The biceps, it does have two heads to it. So there's two main segments of the bicep, but they attach at kind of the same uh, place. So thicker, more peak, really you're just developing the bicep. Now that being said- Yeah, yeah but what about like- um, The brachialis? Yes, the brachialis, which runs underneath and then that's on like the side of the bicep. And I was so just going to say- if you develop that, it'll give you that illusion. Yeah, because theoretically you could train the brachialis, which is also a flexor that- could theoretically give you a little bit more bicep thickness. Now, here's what I like to tell people. I like to tell people, try doing hammer curls. It works that muscle. Also, a lot of people don't do hammer curls. Yeah, as a bicep workout. Hammer yeah. curls, reverse curls, if you don't have those in your routine, would be a, a great exercise. Or even Zotman curls, throwing those in there. Yeah. So those three movements, I would do that. But this idea of changing the shape of a muscle with exercises is uh, something that people that love clickbait and mm -hmm. to sell you things will will try and do. And the truth is, if you already do reverse curls and hammer curls all the time, and you're very consistent with doing that, then actually picking an exercise that technically isn't for that, that's for the bicep that you never do, will mm -hmm. probably show more thickness yeah. in your bicep. So if you're really into arm training and bicep training in particular, um, here's the things to focus on, right? So you can focus on curls with varying hand position because the hand, and you can see here how it's moving my bicep, affects the bicep. So supinated versus pronated. That also will involve you know brachioradialis, which is here on the forearm, brachialis, which is under the bicep. And then here's the other thing you can focus on, elbow placement when you're doing the exercise. So Exercise with the arm next to your body, preacher curls or spider curls where the elbow's in front of the body. And you can even do uh, Dude, exercises. Dude, chin-ups. Well, that's a mass builder, right? Yeah. Curl grip, right? Uh, uh, chin-ups. Well, well, I don't know what we're talking about Yeah, here. well, really. <laughs> <laughs> you guys keep talking about thickness and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying supinated grip, right? More bicep uh, yeah, yeah. activation. Here, here's the thing with all, like, because you can make a case for all these different exercises. And the thing that I'm, I'm just going to keep hammering home is that it's the, the exercise that you don't do. When you want to develop a muscle more, right? Uh, yes, that we've talked about there, there's a, a hierarchy in, in, in exercises, right? As right. far as like, these are more, these are superior to others. But if you do all those superior exercises, you've checked all the boxes for a long time, then simply doing an exercise that your body is unfamiliar yeah, with. They're not good at. Yeah. And you're not good at and, and get good at that exercise is going to show change and development in that area. Mm -hmm. And that goes for any muscle. And so more importantly than you know trying to make the case for this exercise targets this part it's like okay if you train these movements try training a different movement for that and that's that always muscle. been my experience is i'll do this new ex oh wow drag curls let me try that and, oh my god it totally works and then you I just talked about it today with your chest yes a perfect example of that it's yeah like, i bet if i just did that and i right. went to an incline dumbbell press it'd be like oh my god you know, exactly. it's the same thing next question is from mason burnt what are the pros and cons of 
mass gainer protein. Oh, oh mass you're the stinky gainer. guy in the room now. Yeah, you do. You know, it's they're not as Worst popular. Farts, dude. They're they're not oh, as dude. popular as they used to be. That's why, don't you think? Oh, bro, I, they <laughs> you would light up the room if you had a lot of these uh, in so your. So these are the ones that come in these huge canisters, like this big, and yeah. like you take what nine hundred calories, nine hundred at least at, this, at a time. This was a huge market in the nineties. Not so much now, but in the nineties, this was one of the big uh, money makers and. You know, they like uh, I think Twin Lab Gainers Fuel was one of the ones that was starting to be popular. Is it Cyto Gainer or something yeah, like that. Cyto Gainer, Heavyweight Gainer Nine Hundred, that one still yeah. exists. Then Mega Mass came out, and what they would do is they, the number kept going up. I remember it was like the Mass Gainer Wars, so it'd be like five hundred calories a shake, and then they're like nine hundred calories a shake. It got to the point where there were shakes that were four thousand calories. How did they make that happen? They well, they pack them full of, of carbohydrates. Or you get like a, a bucket for a fucking scooper. And that was the other thing. I remember the first time I bought Mass Gainer 4000. It was a, it literally looked like a paint bucket. And I, I'm like, oh my God, they fit 4,000 calories in a serving. And then I opened the lid and there was a scoop in there. I'm not exaggerating. It was that big. And you put, it was like it was like six servings in this huge bucket. It's like and a I'd, sand shovel. Dude, I'd put it in the blender, turn it on, and it was like my mom's like old school high powered blender was almost going to break. It was like, whoa. And no wonder. And then you have to add whole milk to the whole thing. So, all right, pros and cons. Pros, convenient, cheap way to get lots of calories. Cons, it's, it's not the best. Gut. Yeah, it's, it's not the best <laughs> calories. It's a lot of maltodextrin and cheap protein typically. Um, and food is better. Um, other pro, it's sometimes easier to drink calories when you're trying to force feed, I guess, yourself. If you're a hard gainer, I could see the value here. I think, though, you're probably better off buying a high-quality protein shake mm -hmm. and then adding stuff I to want it. Adding yeah. food, oats, fruit and berries, yeah. peanut, butter, peanut butter, eggs. Like So my major con with these, because I went on a kick for a while with this stuff is- uh, When would you drink it, by the way? Before bed or- I mean, I everything. I've set the alarm in the middle of the night. I drink it before workouts, <laughs> yeah, yeah. after workouts, start my day, First eat a meal, the then do it. I mean, you you name it. I have tried eating a mass gainer at different times of the day for whatever reasons, right? Or trying to maximize the absorption of it right right after your workout. The thing that I, I noticed when I was doing it consistently is I've never been able to compare how my body responds when I get most, if not all of my calories from from real food. And totally. being a hard gainer, when I would start calculating the shake up and I'm like, oh, well, 1100 of my calories are coming from this, then I only got to go get 2000 more calories in whole foods. I just never felt like I got the same results as if I ate 35 or 4000 calories of whole foods. And so Agreed. I here. got away from doing the mass gainers completely. I even said, I don't want to take a shake unless I have to, unless I'm missing my protein and it's late. And so now like when I do shakes, it's always in the evening time. And it's only because I wasn't able to get enough protein intake from my, my whole food. Same and here. then when I do it, if it, I'm on a gain, I use oats, I use fruit, I use peanut butter, I use eggs, and I add it to that and make my own gainer shake. And I just feel like getting those whole foods blended up with this, you know, three, 400 calorie regular protein shake gave me more benefits than these, you know, dextrose loaded full of fiber, 900 calorie plus shakes that just literally made me shit. 30 yeah. minutes later. Oh, yeah, dude. Your stomach's just talking the entire day. Mm -hmm. I remember that, like, with these shakes. It just would not resonate. Uh, and, and it was very loud. Like, you, you could hear me, like, in class. <laughs> and just be, raw. Dude, and I have to run to the bathroom. This is when, this is that story I told you guys a long time ago when I was uh, 15 and I'm in the pool and I'm like, oh, the, ga the, the heavyweight gainer 900 hit me all of a sudden. And I ran out of the pool and get in the bathroom and because my drawstring was wet, I couldn't undo it and basically shit myself. <laughs> that's a true story. Yeah. And that's when I kind of swore off. I'm like, this is not, this, why, it's not yeah. going to make me gain mass. Risk versus reward. Yeah. yeah. This is not really working. Here's something. If you're a young kid, you're looking for the convenience, you're looking to save money and it's hard for you to eat all the calories that you need to get your, in order to, to gain mass or whatever. Just do this. Get a high quality protein shake. You can buy whey protein now, very inexpensive. If you can't, you know, you can, Organifi makes good protein. We work with them. Take that, add whole milk, okay? And you want to add more calories, throw some peanut butter. Tastes great, and you've got extra protein, a little bit of carbs and from the- dry and oats. high calorie. Dry oats. Dry oats that if you want to add even more calories. I used to carbs. throw a half a cup to a cup of dry oats, blend it up in there, and it adds It actually tastes good. Yeah. No, I loved it. 
Next question is from Fulvio of the Castle. Should I train behind the neck pull downs or overhead presses to achieve better mobility, or is it just too dangerous? So this is one of those exercises that I cart, was cart taught. The horse. I was actually taught as a trainer never teach. So when I first got my first certification, they said never do overhead presses behind the neck, never do pull downs behind the neck. Totally bad for the shoulders. In fact, I literally I remember the instructor doing this. The instructor stood up got a towel, so he had a regular towel, and he twisted it, and then he bent it, and he's like, this is what you're doing to the muscles of the shoulder when you go behind the neck, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so afraid of these. Yeah. Later on, because all the bodybuilders did these exercises, and I thought to myself, you know, it can't be that bad, let me try it out. I first tried it out, and I didn't necessarily have the mobility, so I would shorten the range of motion and go real light. Eventually, I could do them full range of motion, and then eventually I could add load, and it made my shoulder mobility better. Now, is this the best way to achieve better sh shoulder mobility? No. But I will say this. Uh, if you can't do an exercise, what you should probably do is figure out how to be able to do that exercise with good stability and good mobility because you're just improving your body's ability to move. Your And your shoulders should be able to do things with exercises behind the neck. All, and now it's, the only reason why it's dangerous a lot of people can't do it, so they have to get themselves to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I'm going to say that 99% of you should do the mobility work first and get that done and then go to movements like this. And yeah. the reason, although I will say I did what you did. So I actually was, while I was also working on shoulder mobility, I was also doing behind the neck presses when I didn't really have the full mode in. It started with just the bar. Now, here's the thing you got to, if you do that, Okay, because that's totally fine. You could do that. You could start super lightweight and just get used to. The, is you have to understand how the body compensates in order for you to do that. Yeah. So one of the things, and what I mean by that is, so when I I went from somebody who always shoulder press in the front. Okay, now I'm going to start these behind the neck. Well, what I notice when I do this, my low back arches and mm -hmm. I slide. And you're probably so pushing your head forward. That's right. And, you, and then you push the head forward. And so I would have to get in that position, and then I would have to tighten my core rotate my pelvis, keep that in that position, and then really slow yeah. and control. You just do it with a broomstick to start. Yeah, so you people. have to you mm -hmm. have to know how the body is going to cheat when you go to do that if you if you don't have the right prere prerequisites first. Well it's so, imperative like you pass the wall test, you pass these things that we've sort of outlined uh, in terms of like uh, points of contact if you can't maintain it, like it, it's sort of like there has to be a pre-qualifier in there to be able to do, because it is, and I understand why certifications did sort of like put that out there. Like they didn't want trainers basically jumping their clients into these because they do put you at a little bit more risk, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of value in them once you have the mobility and the strength to be able to pull it off. It really does stimulate the muscles in different ways. Well, that's why this is so important because imagine, I don't know that, but I, I start working on that behind the head with a bar and then I had 25s and then 45s. Meanwhile, the whole time I've got this massive arch in mm -hmm. my back and pushing my head forward in order for me to do it. Yeah, less than ideal movement and your risk of injury now goes up. Way up. Mm -hmm. So to me, like I wouldn't recommend somebody do it. It's like how we talk about the barefoot training thing, right? Like mm -hmm. if you never barefoot train, like you shouldn't all of a sudden go run your your mile run every day barefoot, like for the first time. Like start with just walking outside yeah. barefoot for a while. And, and start building that up before you start well, to challenge Well, that's why it. I liked, too, like Z-Press. Was a, it was a great one in terms Love of like that. really figuring out whether you have the thoracic stabilization, you know, to be able to keep everything, all those, um, you know, keep the bracing mechanisms in place so it protects your spine. Yeah, this person should get MAPS performance. So if you don't have MAPS performance, like because we do the Z-Press in there, we address mobility yep. stuff in there. So this is a perfect program for somebody who wants to get to a place where they can do these movements and to progress them the right way there instead of just jumping to it and, and risking injury. Next question is from Hoop Golf 89 If you had to quit drinking or weed forever, which would it be? Oh, my God, that's easy. Easy. Drinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't even drink. So see see you later. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I mean, since the biotics, uh, I now will incorporate some alcohol because it does prevent the, the shitty feeling the next day, which is why I never drink. So I would always feel garbage the day after. But look, if you look at the data, the data now is very clear. Both have their own risks, but if you had to compare them and you're a health and fitness fanatic, of course, both can be abused. Both can cause problems. So I'm not saying you know one is perfect and one isn't, and anything can be abused also. But if you had to compare them both with moderate usage and you wanted to look at 
effects on body composition, increased heart rate, you know, increased heart disease risk, increased cancer risk, you know, all the all the stuff. Alcohol clearly is worse for your body. Clearly. Even a little bit of alcohol isn't good for your body. Cannabis, on the other hand, marijuana. First off, if you smoke marijuana, that's the worst way to consume it because there's the most negative effects from it. That being said, they have yet to connect smoking marijuana to lung cancer, probably because of the anti-cancer effects of the actual cannabinoids in cannabis. The best way to consume it is to eat it, right? So edible mm -hmm. form. So you eliminate that part. Now, what do the studies show with cannabis? Can it have a negative effect on the brain? Yes, it can cause uh, loss of motivation, some issues with serotonin and dopamine. But does it cause the negative effects on the body like alcohol? No, not even close. Alcohol is way worse uh, for your body than, than cannabis. So yeah, if I had to pick one, it would be that. But they did... They have shown in studies, like in terms of developmental minds, there's issues in terms of. Oh yeah, who we, oh, I'm talking about. We, we can't be talking about under minors right now, right? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's where my you know just uh, caution goes out. But like, yes, I, I and I've become more of a fan of, of cannabis because of uh, Us. the cannabidiol, yeah, <laughs> cannabidiols, and you guys, and uh, just it, it's kind of an interesting thing. Like, uh, it's not it's not like when you're first exposed to it when it was illegal and like you, your friend would you know, show you some and you'd get like way too paranoid and high. it was like a bad experience. So basically like going straight to like a whiskey and you're drinking like nothing but shots instead of like starting with beer. So yep. there's a different way to consume it. You know, if, if you're more educated around it and you could get high strains of CBD and you don't have to go like completely off the deep end uh, right away. But yeah, it's, it's, to me, I've, I've slowly become more of a fan of it, but I'm still, I mean, occasional you know, whiskey and, and, so and give us your answer. Yeah, you have to I, I'm, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with alcohol cause it's just in my blood. So you, keep, you would keep it. You would keep <laughs> it. I'm keeping it. So alcohol. if you had to get he rid of one more. forever. Rid of, so you just brought up something though that is kind of an interesting thought that I, I haven't thought about yet cause my son's so young. Um, but I was, while you were talking, it made me go, Oh, you know what? I wonder if, if I was posed that question, what would I say? So, if I had a choice, though, so for me, I said no brainer, right? But actually, if my high school son came to me and said, Dad, I'm going to smoke weed or I'm going to drink alcohol, I would actually rather him drink alcohol. Okay, well, hold on. Context matters. Okay, so are they are they both? Or would they both be non-abusive? In other words, yeah, of course not. I would, I would never let my son or encourage any, well, and I would have the right conversation. I'm just saying, if I if I had the if this was the rule, like okay? they they went out with their buddies every once in a while, They're smoke gonna, a joint versus. Yeah. B versus drink. I'd want him to drink. No way. E even if you look, not for me, even if you look, That's by the way, by the question. way, son, if you're watching this, do neither. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying do one Does he watch other. us? Yeah. No, he doesn't. But uh, at some okay, point, yeah. maybe somebody will send him this video. And yeah. if I find out- Instead, he becomes a porn star. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Um, when you look at the developmental effects that cannabis has on the brain, it does. But compare it to alcohol. It's also better. So that's, yeah, well, that's alcohol. Also, alcohol also has some does some fucked up shit to your brain. Yeah, it's definitely there's a dangerous element to alcohol. There is, but, I, but yeah, we, but that's so. So here's part of, and of course, I mean, we're we're just playing a game right probably now. Probably, right? yeah. you know what? I know where you're going though. But when in we terms were kids, of the developmental mind, yeah, that's where. But I here's was here's the problem. Out. When we grew up, the kids that smoked a lot of weed were fucking losers yeah. because they were. And now why? They were willing to break the law. Unmotivated, too. Yes. Yeah. And everybody drank alcohol. So that's why. But and, and I feel like it's easier to disguise weed throughout the day and do it all the time. Like, it's like you're not, as a kid, although there's exceptions to the rule, there was kids that came to school drunk. It's a lot harder to disguise that and do that. And I feel like the yeah, kid, you could eat it, and because there's yeah. so much yeah. research around marijuana and that it has some health Except benefits, it's not so shirts, bad. You know, that I mean, I, I went, I had this conversation uh, with my brother when, so he was, so he's what, twelve years younger than me. So I was twenty eight when I was doing the cannabis industry. Yeah. So what does that put him at? Right? Sixteen. Sixteen years old, right? So he's in high school, and his older brother is got dispensary clubs, you know? And so I, and he wasn't really into weed yet, but he was starting to dabble with stuff and drink and all that. And I remember having this conversation with him where my biggest concern was like, listen, I, I really didn't get introduced to this until I was in my late twenties. And I'd already had built a career and had success and worked hard and built good habits and fitness and mm -hmm. reading. And like that had all come together for me already at this, at this point in my life. And then I get introduced this awesome 
thing that makes me chill out and veg out and watch TV and put my feet up and get the munchies and laugh and have a good time. And absolutely loved it because I had, I had already developed a responsible mind. But being introduced to that at such a young age and you get all those cool effects. Totally. I just feel like it's really easy for a young mind to go like, oh, this is totally fine. No big be-. deal. And then before they know it, they're they're unmotivated and they don't get shit done. And I feel like I watched my little brother do that. And he's now getting closer to his getting closer to 30. And he's still kind of now he abuses it. Thinking, yeah, no, yeah. of course. Yeah, you know, well, I'll tell you what, dude. Okay. If you want to talk about abuse, okay. Think of people who abuse weed stoners fucking you know unmotivated whatever think of people who abuse alcohol yeah well you it, like, you're fucked yeah, like you're you'll not kill gonna you. overdose on way weed. less common though in, in the high school kids right yeah. like you you rarely i mean at least i don't even i think i remember one or two kids that you know i would consider alcoholics or that were like sneaking alcohol. you know why though it's be- believe it or not this is 100 percent true when i was in high school it was harder to get alcohol than it was to get weed well, it's still that way today. Yeah, still Bec- that way because today. it's a regulated That's another, legal market. Uh, another reason why, again, I would be, I would be more that I'd be more inclined to to caution my son with uh, his cannabis use because I already know the law has already put enough restrictions in in the way for him for alcohol. Plus, you're not going to buy. What's he going to buy? Moonshine. You, you can't really get alcohol. Right. In the black That's market. what I'm saying. It's like right. it's that the, the the laws have already put enough restrictions in in his way. Yeah. To, to making alcohol become like a daily thing. Plus, it'd be easy for me to tell if my son's getting drunk before school and yeah, so that's that. true. But hiding cannabis and smoking it here and there all the time and it becoming a regular thing and access to it, yeah. I would be more worried about that and and then him him kind of going down that path for the rest of You make of his a life. really good yeah. point. You know, my strategy is that when my kids are old enough legally, and I've already told my, my kids this, the first time you, you really drink and the first time you try anything that's legal... I, you'll do it with me because I feel like uh, I'm not. I feel I, I would like because they're going to do it anyway. They're going to try it anyway, yeah. whether they do it before they legally can or after. You know, if my kids like if they become, you know, if they're like goody two shoe, I'm sure they'll try it when they at least become legal. Right. They'll say, oh, let me see what this is all about. And I know my first experience with no, my family never drank alcohol. I know Italians typically drink. Wine. My house never had any alcohol. So my expo, my first experience with drinking was I got way too smashed yeah. and because I Those, didn't uh, same experience I yeah. had no experience I didn't so, know you know what to experience so but if, I bet if I did it with my parents and they did it with me and we had a good time mm-hmm. and they said no slow down mm-hmm. and here's what it would have helped and so I want I would want that experience with my kids so that they develop more responsible you know so use or whatever I mean your your son's in high school now so yeah. have you have you told him this yet? Yeah, I did. Oh, so you've already told him that. I've had you've this already, conversation. You've already said, son, when, yeah, when, if and when time, the time comes, you want to try something. Oh, I'm going to, and if he doesn't say oh, anything, cool. I'm going to cool. wait till he has his birthday and I'm going to say, hey, do you want to try this? And we'll do this together. Yeah. And we'll go a little bit and I'll show you. Because the same thing with cannabis. Now, you know, drinking too much alcohol, that can have some really scary, like, like health, like you could die. Mm-hmm. You won't die from too much weed, but you'll feel like you'll fucking die. I mean, I, I, I remember as a kid <laughs> overdosing that. I was terrifying. Oh, yeah. I well, that, that, I think that's the the interesting part and in the about that. I think as a parent, when you look at it, and you we have the all the years experience of being around all the stuff and using it, is that I, it's almost uh, more dangerous that weed doesn't have as much negative stuff tied to it as alcohol does. You know, like you think uh, alcohol, then you think like hard drugs, like cocaine, and yeah, yeah. you think psilocybin, LSD, all these things. Kids are like most good kids at least i was like this like yeah. that's scared of all mm-hmm. that stuff because you heard all this stuff where you know weed has gotten a, a thing now where it's it's pretty cool like it's, it's innocuous like, yeah it's not gonna do anything yeah so i, I and i, I no, would all be, you need is one overdose on thc to know that that is not that is a and terrible it, I, less about that and more just it becoming accepted as like i get high all the time mm-hmm. you know and then all of a sudden i've got this kid who's stoned every day and ain't doing shit with his life and doesn't think anything's wrong with it because we it's not bad for me you know what i'm saying but yeah. it's like you ain't doing shit with your life because you're not present ever and not fucking realizing what's going on absolutely Look, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We have so many free fitness guides that can help you build a more fit, healthy body. So we have guides for burning body fat, building muscle, getting better at specific exercises, all at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsalon, Adam at mindpumpadam.